Hi everyone, I had planned to do two other videos, including another video in the Obsidian Basic series before diving into today's video. However, Obsidian version 0.8.0 released for insiders. With it have come some major improvements to search, including support for regex or regular expressions, and I wanted to take full advantage of it. If you are a Catalyst supporter, then all you need to do is update to this version. That is, if you haven't already done so. If you aren't a Catalyst supporter, then this version will be available to you soon. Or so I'm hoping. Alright, with that, there's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. To get to the search option, click on the magnifying glass icon at the top left. There are three settings available above the search bar. The first available setting is the collapse results option, which enables you to toggle between just showing matching note names and showing the lines in which the matches appear. The second available setting is match case, which essentially toggles case sensitive matching. These settings can be overridden by special operators, which we will go into later. The third setting, explain search term, will show you what the search query actually does in plain terms. This will come extremely handy when we look at what is regex or regular expressions later in the video. Let's look at how to search using the search bar. The very basic method is to just type the word you're looking for and it will show all the results. Let's search for sleep. If you type multiple words, it will by default search for notes containing the words anywhere in the file. Let's search for BCP day. As you can see, it's picking up all the occurrences of the word BCP and day. If you want to search for words that appear in your note one after the other, you need to put it in quotes. So in this case, we'll put quotes before and after our query. And as you can see, only notes which contain BCP and day together are highlighted. If you're searching for words which consist of actual quotes, then you can use the backslash. If you're searching for multiple words that contain backslash, then use double backslash. Next, we'll come to Boolean operations. Use OR to match one word or another in a note. For example, let's create three notes. Note A, which contains A, and Note B, which contains B, and Note C, which contains B and C. Now we will search for A or B. Pay attention to the syntax OR. As you can see, all three nodes, note A, note B and note C are visible. Now I only wanted to show nodes that contain A or B and do not contain C. For that, we will use the hyphen sign to negate nodes which contain C. Now only note A and note B are visible. If you wanted to find nodes A and B but negate all which contain C, for that we would use parenthesis. As you can see, only nodes A and B are now visible. Finally, let's look at special operators before we get into rejects. There are four special operators available. One, file. This will perform search on the file name. Let's search for files ending with 2020 AD. We will type the file, then colon, then in quotes, since we want the file name to exactly be in the order 2020 AD. Next, we look at path. This will perform search on the file path absolute from root. Let's say you want to see all the notes in the folder journal. We'll type path colon journal slash. Third, we look at match case. Let's search for notes containing the word A. Now I only want to see the notes that contain capital A. So we type match case colon A in capital. And now we'll only get that result. Fourth is ignore case, which will do just the opposite. Now, the most interesting feature that's part of the insider build version 0.8.0, regular expressions or regex. A regular expression is a sequence of character that define a search pattern. To define a regular expression in Obsidian search, you need to type slash before and after the expression. Please also note that the character classes that I'll be going over require an extra backslash to work. In case they change that by the time the stable version is released, please remember to change the syntax accordingly. So where I mentioned double backslash, you'll use one. This will only change if they change the syntax. Right now the syntax is as is. Let's start with character classes. Period or full stop refers to any character except new line. Double backslash D refers to numbers or digits. Double backslash capital D refers to not a digit. Double backslash W refers to word character. Double backslash 
W in capital refers to not a word character. Double backslash S refers to white space, that is spaces, new lines and tabs. Double backslash S in capital refers to not a white space. Square brackets matches characters in brackets, that is a character set. Square brackets with a caret sign will match characters that are not in the bracket. A vertical bar signifies either or. Normal brackets signifies a group. Generally, regular expressions includes anchors as well, which allow you to define a certain pattern at the start or end of a string or word boundary. However, at this time, Obsidian doesn't appear to currently support this. If that changes, I'll create a new video for the same. Now, we come to quantifiers. First, let's look at the different type of quantifiers. Then, let's take a look at some examples to understand how and where to use it. The first quantifier is the asterisk quantifier, which signifies 0 or more. Then comes the plus quantifier, which signifies 1 or more. There's also an optional quantifier. You use a question mark to define it. It signifies 0 or 1. You can also specify an exact number by writing the number in curly braces. You can also specify a range of numbers. To do that, you use curly braces and inside you will first have the minimum and then the maximum value. So the correct syntax for this will be curly brace open, the minimum value, comma, the maximum value and curly brace close. Now let's put this into practice and see how it all comes together. Let's first search for all to-dos inside a vault. Now if you remember, the syntax for to-dos in Obsidian is hyphen, square bracket open, space and square bracket close. Now let's try to recreate this in search. We will first add slashes, then hyphen, then space, then backslash, then backslash because as I had mentioned above, for some reason, Obsidian requires double backslash to work. Then square bracket. What this means is that we are specifying that we want to use the square brackets as it appears and not as a special property in DJX. So we are just basically escaping the square bracket. Then we leave a space, double backslash, and then square bracket, closing, and finally space. Now, as you can see, we can see all the to-dos. Next, let's see how to find all completed to-dos. If you remember, the syntax for completed to-do is just an X instead of the space in the bracket. Let's change this example to reflect a completed to-do. All we have to do is add square brackets after the square bracket open and mention x in lower and upper case. And now we can see all our completed to-dos and tasks. Now we will just add a space in between the character set specified and it will show all the to-dos that are completed and are to be completed. Let's look at another example. Inside a note, let me put a few cash amounts. So let me put $25, $36 and $125. Now let's try to create an expression which tries to find this. So we put our slashes to start a reject search. Then we put two backslashes to escape the dollar sign as it's a special character. And we want to search for dollar as dollar and not as a special operation defined in a regular expression. Now, if you see the amount specified are 1 to 3 digits. So, let's specify that. If you remember, we put double backslash D to specify digit. We open curly braces as we want to give a range. Our minimum digit value is 1, so we type 1, then comma, and then 3 to specify the maximum digits that should be there. And that returns the note with the values. Let's create an expression for finding phone numbers. Let me just open a note and put in a sample phone number. So I will put in my country code and then a random 10 digit number. Now to find numbers like this, we will have to tell search to find the plus sign and the country code, which in this case is 91. Plus is a special command in regex. If you remember, it's a quantifier which signifies one or more. But we want to use plus as a search term. So we will need to escape it. Let's add two backslashes to escape it, then specify plus 91, the country code we want to find. We leave a space in between and finally specify 10 digits. The way we do that is by two backslashes and D, then in curly braces specify 10. 
I really want to try another expression as well. For this example, let's use UAE. UAE's country code is plus 971. Let's make this a mobile number for Etisalat. So we leave a space and put 50. Then we again leave a space and I will type 1 to 7 since the mobile numbers are 7 digit. Now let's repurpose the expression in such a way that both the numbers will be picked up in search. Let's change 91 to double backslash D. Then let's specify a minimum and maximum range. For this example, I would put 2 comma 3 in curly braces. But let's use 1 as the minimum value and 3 as the maximum. Since countries like US, Canada, etc. have a single digit country code. Now let's change this to 2. Now there are multiple ways we can accomplish retrieving the search value that we are looking for. Let me show you two. One way is let's use an optional. So we say double backslash digit and add a question mark. Then we leave a space and add a question mark. What this specifies is that the searched value might include zero or one digit or zero or one space in between. Then let's put two backslash again and define a value of seven in curly braces. As you can see, we are now getting both the numbers. Now let's try and use a different method to accomplish this. We'll use a vertical bar so that search can either find a digit or a space. We get rid of the two optionals. Let's put the space and double backslash D in a bracket and add a vertical pipe right after D and close the bracket after the space. You can see that we are getting the same search results. Let's try another example. Let's add in a fake email ID in a note. So let's put fake at example.com. Now let's create an expression to find it. So we open square brackets and put A to Z. Then we close the square brackets and add a plus sign. What this means is that find one or more values of A to Z in a note. Then we add the at sign. Then again we put A to Z square brackets and add a plus sign. Since the domain is also from one to many characters. If you remember, period or full stop specifies all characters. So we use double backspaces to escape the special syntax. Let me just put in another email ID instead of dot com. Let's type hyphen com. Now we get rid of the double backspace. You can see how it's even picking that address up in search because period or full stop specifies all characters. Now let's add the double backslash again and end it with com. This is a basic example. If you really wanted to search over all form of emails, then you would have uppercase A to Z inside the brackets as well, along with digits, periods, underscores and other special characters. Let's see how we can search for URLs. URLs start with HTTP. So we type that. Some use the secure extension as well. So let's put S and make it an optional by putting a question mark, then colon and two slashes. We have to escape both since they are part of the syntax. So we add backslash in front of each. Some URL start with www. So let's put that in a bracket. And again, don't forget to escape the period. So we put double backslash in front of it. Let's put a question mark to specify an optional. Then we want one or more instances of any word character. So we put double backslash and w and add the plus to specify one or more. Then we put the period sign with two backslashes and finally double backslash w plus again to specify one or more instances of any word character. And that will show us all URLs that are in this vault. Finally, let me open a vault that I use. I like to track my sleep as I've shown in my template from time to time. I want to see all the notes where I've recorded my sleep. The way I write it is one to two digits and H which denotes how many hours I've slept and one to two digits and M which denotes how many minutes I've slept. So let's write an expression for it. We start with two slashes, then two backslash D to specify digit. Then we specify range with minimum value as one and maximum value as two in curly braces and H. Then we leave a space and again use the same syntax and type M instead of H to specify minutes. Now there are nights where I don't even get an hour sleep. So how do we account for those values? We define an optional by putting question marks behind H and space. That will make hours and the space or gap in between hours and minutes optional. 
As you can see, that shows us days where my sleep or deep sleep has been less than an hour. Finally, let's look at another feature I really love. That is the ability to save or start the current search. First, let's activate the start plugin. To do that, go to settings, then plugins and turn on start. Now, you should see a start icon on the top left. To start or unstar current search, just press this icon and the current search will be saved. So whenever I want to find out notes where I have recorded sleep, I just need to click this and it will help me find it. It would have been great to have the ability to rename this as well, so that you don't need to sit and decode which regex does what. I have created a feature request on the Obsidian forums. If you think it is a good idea, then come on over and add to the request. This video has taken a lot of time to make. However, I am sure you too must be very excited with this new feature. If you found this video helpful, then please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any expressions that you think will come handy, or if you have any suggestions, then please put it down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.